Reverse engineering is the dark art of taking code that somebody else wrote and taking it apart to see what it does. It's kind of like a Rubik's cube. Actually, I'm, I'm not really sure how that analogy works out. Now, maybe it's a piece of malware. Maybe you're trying to figure out what this malicious piece of code on your computer did. And by the way, also Lockbit, an international ransomware organization, just got rolled up by the FBI. God, you love to see it. Or maybe it's simpler than that. Maybe it's just a puzzle. And by taking apart this puzzle, you learn something new or kind of neat about computing. These puzzles are called crack me challenges. And by solving one, typically you make yourself a better programmer by learning a little bit about how computers work at a fundamental level. Also, don't worry about these empty boxes. I'm just moving. Now, today we're gonna solve a fairly straightforward crack me, one for the ARM architecture, but not in the way that you're probably used to. We're gonna use a program called Anger, and that's an Anger without an E, and it has some really, really interesting properties. Now, if you're new here, this is Low Level Learning, a channel where I do videos about low-level computer programming and software security. If that interests you, hit the subscribe button and leave a like. Now, let's get into that crack me. I'm not like physically going anywhere. I'm not sure why I motioned this one. Now, come on, take a seat. So we're gonna download this one called Towels Armageddon. I'm choosing this one because it's an ARM architecture binary. For those of you that are new and may wanna be doing this stuff or trying to learn the art of assembly language or reverse engineering, I highly recommend the ARM architecture because it's a reduced instruction set computer architecture, which is really, really simple to understand compared to some of the variable length ones like Intel. I've got it downloaded here and we have the file here. It's gonna be called uh, Armageddon, makes sense. It's an ARM binary and we can kind of check that and make sure that uh, it is what they say it is. It's a 32-bit least significant bit, so little endian uh, arm binary. Great. It's uh, dynamically linked and it's stripped. Stripped meaning that it has no debug information. There's no fancy symbols to kind of tell what's going on uh, in the binary. So what I like to do when I'm doing any of these crack me's is first just run strings on it. I know strings is kind of like the go-to as like a joke noob tool to figure out like if the flag is just put in the binary, you'll just see it pop out. But I also like to use strings on binaries to figure out what I'm getting myself into, right? I can typically pretty quickly in a binary see from strings like what's going on so let's kind of look at the functions here it loads up the loader obviously uh, depends on libc that makes sense we call a function a couple function calls so we have exit scanf puts abort printf and then libc start main and i'm not seeing any other symbol names uh eventually they're gonna probably print some prompt you oh it's from umd that's pretty cool umd ctf 2019 uh the code did not validate uh, otherwise we enter a code and then that's it okay so it looks like we're gonna put in some kind of code that is uh, 41 characters long. And then from there, we're gonna get a flag. Pretty, pretty straightforward, awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this into Ghidra. Ghidra is the reverse engineering framework by the NSA. It's open source, it's really cool. Uh, Ghidra 11 just came out, which means Ghidra dark mode exists. So that's freaking awesome. Um, if you're new to the world of reverse engineering, what we're looking at here is the actual binary code, right? So on the left is the disassembly, which is this, the assembly code broken into the assembly operations. And then on the right is Ghidra's interpretation of what that code looked like in C. Obviously we don't have debug information, so we don't know what the source code was, but Ghidra is doing its best to lift that into a meaningful representation using the C programming language. Let's take a look and see what, uh, what kind of trouble we're getting into here. So the reason I went to this function is because it is called from the entry point, right? So any binary that uses libc, the entry symbol gets called, that calls libc start main, and then that first function here is always the main function. That's how libc start main is, uh, is derived. So we can go ahead and hit the F key to turn this into a function, and you'll see that now it's not purple, we're not in like this weird error state. And I'm gonna increase the font size a little bit for you guys. If you guys, if you guys needed that on mobile, please do me a favor, say thanks triple L in the chat. Very cool. I also want you guys to be able to see this. Cool, so we have that going on and we can see here that the program looks pretty simple. We print out the prompt, we say enter code, and then we do scanf uh, into the stack using some format string. And the format string is that percent %41s. This means we're gonna input 41 characters of string data and then do some operation on them. So we're just gonna rename this, this uh, variable uh, our data, right? And we can do that by pressing L and then typing our data. And we'll just call that format. To, we're trying to turn all of these labels into things we can just easily read in English because the less uh, nonsense we have, the more easy it is to understand what the code is actually doing. I did notice in the description of the challenge, they said it features some very light ARM assembly obfuscation. It was originally released at UMD CTF 2019, okay. But what's cool is that we can see that obfuscation happening in the assembly, but Ghidra's lifter, Ghidra's like, you know, interpreter into C doesn't have to worry about it. But what you're actually seeing here 
is after every function or after literally every assembly instruction, it's branching ahead to the next instruction and there's garbage data in the middle. And we can actually see that pretty straightforward. If we go to the binary and try to object dump it, it's very difficult to see what's going on in the program. So we see the call to libc start main here and we can tell where the main symbol is by the R0 value in the libc start main call. So it's gonna be at 1040 and then 1040 or 10400 contains the variable uh, 14804. So we can go to that. And so this is our start symbol, right? But now what's happening is because we don't have control flow information, we don't have arrows that are showing us what's happening, we have a branch to this label and then this instruction runs and then another branch. So it, it obfuscates the code in a way that makes it very difficult to interpret. Whereas in Ghidra, we're getting really, really useful information in the, in the form of C and not in the form of assembly that's been obfuscated by the compiler. The challenge is to input the correct data and get a flag out of it, right? So we have to know what the good data is and then it'll print out the you did it string. So I think what's happening here is this is them decoding the you did it string, right? So what's, what's going on here? We have a bunch of, I'm trying to get my fat head out of the way so you guys can see this. But yeah, there's, there's some basic binary obfuscation going on here where they have some string and a counter. So we'll rename this counter. Yeah, so they're literally just like adding some values, XORing it and taking it apart. But what we're actually worried about is finding out the data that's required to go into this program to get to this point. So if we go to one of these functions, for example, let's see what's going on here. We have, so this is the input. This is gonna be a, um, a care star because that's our, our input to the program. If string of one times string of 27 times string of 15, okay, blah, 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 equals, does not equal some magic value, the code did not validate. Okay, so we're seeing some initial constraints on the value here that we have to solve. So we have to figure out some kind of math that makes all of these things possible. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. If the code keeps going like this, it's gonna be very painful because you know it looks like we have multiple validations to check. Yeah, okay, if if this minus this times this is not equal to this value. And I'm, I'm guessing that like every one of these validation functions is gonna be like that. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> this is quickly turning into a very painful math problem. Oh, uh, let's see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a library called Anger. And as the description here says, Anger is an open source binary analysis platform for Python. It comes with both static and dynamic symbol can analysis providing tools to solve a variety of tasks. The primary one we're gonna look at today is this idea of symbolic execution, specifically with constraint solving. What's really, really cool is Anger has this idea of pathfinders. So if you consider the program as we are trying to run the program to its completion where we get to the puts stage where it puts this magical value, we need to get there by avoiding all of these exit statements, right? We wanna avoid any code that goes to exit. We can even tell Anger to specifically avoid the exit function. The way Anger works is Anger takes the constraints required to execute a program. So the registers and what values they need to contain to continue program execution, and they boil them down to effectively a math problem. And then by using a constraint solver like Microsoft's Z3, they can turn the constraints into a math problem that they can solve. So by using Anger on this problem, Problem, we can literally just turn the input required to get to this point in the program into a math problem that Z3 will burn on and give us the relevant, the required input to get to the end of the problem. Okay, I know, forgive me for writing Python, but Anger is a library written for Python. And personally, I think for doing binary exploitation and reverse engineering tasks, Python is a really great language. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna write the imports to import Anger and then import Clarity. Uh, Clarity is the constraint solver that's used in Anger to do the math effectively to, to solve the input for the problem, right? And then also we wanna import sys because I wanna do, I wanna be able to change the name of the program off of sys argv. So we'll have our function called main, it'll take uh, argv as input, and then we'll say that uh, the path name to the file equals argv of one, very cool. And then what we do to make a project in Anger, we just say anger.project and path name, and then we go from there. We're gonna be using a simulation to explore how to get to a good address while avoiding bad addresses. And again, we do that by saying, we wanna to get to our you know, print the flag function without hitting the exit function. We're gonna use this example for the majority of our problem. Now the start address, we have to create a state where the problem will start in, right? And we can start the problem, we'll say right here at 14ac3. So that'll be our start address for our 
our solver. And then the good address is going to be the address after we print our data, right? So right here at the return address, I want to get to this address. That is our, our good address. We'll take that. Very good. And then also our avoid address, right? We want to avoid particular parts of the problem. In particular, we want to avoid any call to exit. So we can go to the global offset table instruction for exit, and we can avoid this right here, this 10, 3B0. Wonderful. And then so we're literally going to take the code that came from the example over there and just make it so that we set up the same simulation state. OK, so what we have here is our initial state. This is us creating a blank simulation state for anger to solve with. Right. And the address we're going to start that state in as it applies to the binary is that start address right after the function gets called. We have the simulation, which is just turning that initial state into a sim manager, which is a factory within Anger. And then we also want it to explore to find all of those good addresses and avoid all those bad addresses. Now, if the simulation runs and it finds a path that is solvable to get to, ideally and realistically, there only can be one of those, right? We only have one flag or one answer to the problem. So we'll extract that simulation. The issue with this problem right now is that we haven't given anger the thing that it needs to solve, right? This is what we call our symbolic value. By treating the input to this problem as symbolic, it'll create a tree of all the possible states that it could be and then use that to solve the problem to give us the flag. So let's create that flag that we're going to put into our problem. OK, and here we have the input size of the flag and then the input value of the flag. We're using Clarity to create a bit vector symbolic. Again, that's a symbolic value that will be treated as a piece of math that we have to solve later. And this is the size, right? It's a 32 byte flag times eight bytes. It could be longer. It could be shorter. But by partially constraining just part of the flag, it may enable anger to solve the rest of the flag if it's longer. Now, the issue with this is we're saying that it's a byte vector of 32 times 8 bytes, right? Or it's a bit vector of 32 times 8 bits. From a mathematical perspective, if we don't constrain that down to less of a key space, the explosion for the inputs that might be possible to the program is exponential. So what we have to do is we have to constrain our inputs to only be inputs that we can meaningfully give to our problems. I think ASCII characters, white space, stuff like that. OK, and we do that just here. We say for every byte in the input value chopped into 8-bit segments, right? So we take 8 bits at a time, so a single byte. And we add to our simulation state that every byte has to be greater than hex A, which is a new line character, and less than 7F, which is the maximum value of ASCII printable characters. And this makes sense, right? Because we're reducing the key space in half to make it so that anger can solve our problem. And also, it makes sense because we can't type higher than 7F on a regular English keyboard, right? So this converts a much larger tree of gigantic inputs and reduces it by an entire order by cutting the key space in over half. And then finally, we have one more thing we have to do. We have to say that the flag is equal to s.solver, which is the Clarity solver in the uh, simulation state, dot eval our uh, input value, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. And there we go. So in theory, if this works, we should be able to do just print, just print flag and also print uh, s.posic.dumps s dot or sys.standardout.file number. So we're just going to have, we're going to print the flag that we found through our mathematical operation, and we're also going to print the dump of the standard out of the binary, or of this run, which should have the congratulations you solved the problem message. And then one thing we also have to do is you have to actually say that the input to the pro program is going to be our input value, right? So we, we made this, uh, this symbolic value, but we didn't actually give it to the program. So now we say that standard in is equal to input val. Very good. Okay. So we go ahead and do that, and let's run it. OK, so this is where things get a little hairy. So you noticed how it ran and immediately ended. The issue here is that that means that we ran the program and we created a state that was not mathematically solvable. So that means that something about our program is incorrect. And what actually this turns into is it is known that passing input to a program in Anger via scanf is typically very problematic. So instead of starting the program here, what we're going to do is we are going to create a state on the stack that emulates after scanf is ran. And instead of giving our flag as standard into the program, we're going to put our symbolic value on the stack, right? And that's going to be at sp minus hex 34. So let's go do that right now. OK, so what we did is we actually removed it from standard in because, again, we're not going to treat it like we're giving it into the program via standard in. What we're going to do instead is we are going to in simulation, create a stack frame by setting the base pointer 
equal to the stack pointer and then subtracting the stack pointer by some value, right? To create that stack frame. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to store into our initial state at the BP minus hex 38, our input value, which again is that symbolic going to be solved by the math solver piece of the equation into that problem. And then the same thing, we're gonna let the simulation explorer run. And if it finds any paths that get it to that, solve the equation on the input value. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and solve this problem and see what trouble we can get into. Uh, solve Armageddon. And again, this is gonna take a second because it has to go through, figure out the math to get to the point where we solve that the, the final state and then do the actual mathematical operations uh, to give us the number. Cool, so we found a state that the output, the standard out was code validated successfully. And the, the flag is this long number from Clarity and it's printing it as a decimal. So what we have to do in Python is we have to get the hex value of this decimal and then we have to extract this and we're gonna turn this into a string by doing bytes from hex. We'll do bytes dot from hex, bada bing. That's not correct, bytes dot from hex in quotes. Uh, and then we, okay, there we go. UMD CTF dash arm ish sat is fine. And the joke there being that we had to use a sat solver uh, to get this to work. So let's put this in the program and see if we can't run it. And I'm assuming that there's a second uh, bracket that I missed. So Armageddon, arm is satisfying, code did not validate. Interesting. Okay, okay, let's just make this a little longer. Let's see if I can solve any more of these. May have one bytes. I know I should have added this to the script. Stop yelling at me. I can smell it in the fucking comments. You should have just Type this into your script, bro. Yeah, I got it. There we go. UMD CTF arm is so satisfying with a little salt at the end there. So let's do that. Armageddon, boom, code validated successfully. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I love CTF. I love capture the flag. Reverse engineering is fun. Try this out, write the script yourself, learn a little bit about that sat solvers, about anger, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Check out this other video where I cracked a different crack me and learned something pretty sweet. See you there.